The release date of Halo 4 has been officially announced, but there's so much more than just Halo 4 coming to the PC. There's 11 extra features on top of some Xbox Series X and S improvements as well. So stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again, giving you our news and informational video when it comes to Halo. If you like these kind of videos, make sure to tap that like button as it greatly helps out the video and channel, gets more people a chance to see this video as it hits the algorithm just a little bit better to help out the channel. So you know my video yesterday where I uploaded saying, hey, Halo 4 content leaked and also the uh, speculation of the release date. I speculated that it would be November 17th. Well, I made that video on Sunday, uploaded it at 6 a.m on Monday to get a proper viewership. And guess what happens at 6 a.m. on Twitter? Yeah, the Twitter handle for Halo tweeted out saying that Halo 4 is gonna be released on the 17th. At the exact same time I'm uploading my video, goes live. You can't make this stuff up. At least I was able to use my big gamer brain to be able to predict the date properly, which I think was kind of straightforward because uh, usually with these big kind of updates, there's usually some kind of title update that goes along with the game, meaning it has to go through Microsoft certification process and they try to pile on a lot of that stuff. And we do know there's gonna be some Xbox Series X and S improvements coming to the MCC on the 17th. So I figured they'd probably pile it on together. And well, that's true. So November 17th, guys, Halo 4 will be releasing on PC, and also you'll be getting an update on the Xbox and the Xbox Series X. So there are 11 extra features coming along with Halo 4. It's not just the game, there's so much more to it. So we're gonna go right into it in this video. So one, we have UI and UX improvements. Now they do mention in the previous dev update that there can be more minor updates to the UI that's gonna be coming, probably more to uh, interface better with uh, the input-based matchmaking, the, the cross-play, server region selection, and things like that. The last major update we were able to have for the UI was, uh, I think, back in ODST when they added in the ability to view your challenges mid-game. So I probably see some minor things like that. After playing the flight, that's all I really noticed was just the changes to the UI to implement some of these new features coming in. Number two is in-game FPS cap and adjustments. This is actually a really great feature as someone who streams or just likes a much more consistent experience while playing the MCC on PC. Previously, it was either 60 FPS or unlimited. And unlimited, yeah, it's great for the games that run well on it, which we'll get into later in this video why more games are gonna be running better. That, uh, it was just like, I don't, I don't want to make my system work any harder than it has to, you know? I have a 144 hertz monitor, so I don't really need anything above that. There's a lot of people with 60 hertz monitors, 120 hertz monitors. There's no reason for your PC to work any harder when you're not going to be getting the benefits. Hence why they added in the FPS caps, so you can do it in-game. You can do 60, 120, 180, and I believe 240, and even 320, if I remember correctly. Something crazy like that, so that's an amazing feature to add in. Three being additional video settings for PC, uh, things like anti-aliasing, water effects, blood, uh, just very other minor kind of things like that you can kind of generally get a chance to tinker around with in uh, PC games, but now you get to do that in the MCC rather than just being low, medium, or high settings overall. This is a nice feature that I didn't really find it that necessary since uh, these games are so old that if you have a gaming PC or a PC that can run some video games, most likely you can run the MCC games just fine on even max settings. So say you like really high texture quality and draw distance, but you don't really care much for anti-aliasing, you can kind of tweak around those kind of things. And here are some of the big ones, guys. Input-based matchmaking is number four. Big thing going in within the PC community is the controller versus mouse and keyboard debate. And yes, I would say that controller has an advantage just because these classic Halo games are designed from the ground up to be played on controller and the way, it's the way the players move, the way the aiming mechanics are, and some of the aim assist that's built into the controllers and stuff like that, it's just not that fair of a playing field to be on, to be honest. I tried doing mouse and keyboard for months straight. I just gave in and went back to controller just because it's just, it's just better to play classic Halo on these controllers. That's it. So, but if you really want to play mouse and keyboard, you don't want to feel like you're at a disadvantage, you now have input-based matchmaking. Now they did mention that this is going to be a bit of a per playlist setting, so game modes like Firefight and Infection, it's going to be input-based matchmaking 
however you like like it's this wild west over there but for more competitive games i'm guessing with like social and especially with ranked to be much more strict in how much they let the cross play input or different inputs play against each other number five being regional server selection which is going to be great guys uh if you don't want to be connected to anything that's above like you know 120 ping or something like that you can select those or maybe if you're having issues trying to connect to servers and you're like kind of like in australia or in europe you're struggling to find matches select some of those servers that might be more populated they will indicate within the ui as well saying if it's either low medium or high population with the mcc as well number six is the big one i'm sure a lot of you guys have been looking forward to and it's cross play between pc and xbox i had a chance to test this out during the halo 4 flight and i had to tell you it just works all of this just works but no it actually does work not like how todd howard mentions it but like how we're mentioning it with halo that it just works in the flight i was able to play with people on console i was playing on pc and we just connected and just played games like there's really no other way to better explain it that it just worked you can cross play now with input based matchmaking and cross play you can turn those options on or off within the ui as well so if you're playing on pc and you only want to match pc players you can do that same thing if you're on the xbox you only want to play with the xbox players you can do that as well. Let's say you want to enjoy the benefits of crossplay, but you don't want to deal with those different inputs. Well, that's why you get input-based matchmaking. You can turn that off and on as well. Number seven is text chat improvements. Now this does sound rather minor, but honestly it does actually really make the experience of playing MCC a lot better. If you guys remember back in the Halo Reach flight days, they had text chat on there, but it was really overly censored to the point where like random acronyms would be blurred out. Uh, you really had to be like, you know, you know, very, very nice in the chat to avoid being blocked or anything like that. And there was a complaint about it during the flights and they just completely removed all the censorship within that text chat has led it to providing some rather toxic moments while playing games. And yeah, like, yeah, snowflakes, you know, back in 360 days, you would have been melted. I know, I understand that. But we are also, as someone who's a content creator like me, and other streamers out there you can't have people going in the chat and dropping some really racist stuff because that does happen and if it happens in your stream you have to acknowledge it because everyone's looking at the screen they see it you see it it's a big elephant in the room you have to take address at it but now the tech chat improvements you can actually have it be moderated now so that if you say some naughty words you're not supposed to say in public those are actually getting blurred out and the obvious ones very well done, 343. Number eight is improved customization for Halo 4. Currently in the MCC, all you have are these pre-made sets for Halo 4's armor customization. Kind of boring. Doesn't really give you the true experience that you had back in 2012. Well, that's all changed now. You have the reach level customization with Halo 4 armor sets, which actually, I did not realize how many armor sets there are in Halo 4. Like, it's probably the most customizable sporting you could possibly make within the halo franchise that's not an exaggeration there are so many different armor variations that i was scrolling through i was like wow there's so many options i'm actually a little bit overwhelmed i can't remember all the names of these things and so you actually get a chance to truly express yourself within the game and you get to choose your primary or secondary colors Number nine is a huge PC improvement it's variable frame rate improvements coming to halo reach in halo h2a that is absolutely awesome. You guys remember, currently right now in the retail version of the MCC, when you're playing Halo Reach or Halo 2 Anniversary, if you're playing above 60 FPS, it's not a good experience. It's super framey, very choppy, and honestly, it really affects your experience while playing. And when I'm playing those games, I just lock at 60, which is really annoying because since they're, the, all the settings are universal, that if I want to play multiple types of games, say like Reach, H2A, Halo 3, and Halo 2, say for example, and Search for Team Slayer, I have to keep everything locked at 60, even though Halo 3 and Halo 2 Classic work totally fine on limited frames. And so it's a shame that that's been the case for so long, but I recently saw within the flights when they brought in Halo Reach content, that variable frame rates actually worked above 60 in Reach and it's super smooth. So I can imagine seeing that with H2A, so that's gonna be amazing so i can actually enjoy those games at a proper pc experience above 60 fps probably lock it at 120 and just enjoy the enjoy the extra frames because they're going to be good 
Number 10 here is a big one. Season 4 is coming along with Halo 4 as well. If you guys checked out my most recent video, I showcased some leaked content about Season 4, so I highly suggest you guys go check out that video. There I showcase mainly all the different weapon skins, vehicle skins, and even some of the Halo Reach armor, which we know is not actually going to be making it into Season 4 due to some pipeline issues. They say it'll most likely come within Season 5. But seeing such awesome content be added into mainly Halo 3 is just a really great experience to see with along with some Halo Reach adjustments as well. Seeing a gold BR just looks so good in so many ways. And number 11 for you Xbox Series X and S players because by the time this game comes out, well today actually is the release date of these consoles and so you're probably wondering, well, where are the games where I can get to truly experience the power of the most powerful console ever created? Well, on November 17th, the release date for Halo 4, there's going to be an Xbox Series X and S improvements coming. For the Xbox Series X, you'll be able to play the MCC at 120 frames at 4K resolution. That's... Well, that's nice. <laughs> but then also you get to enjoy the Xbox Series S version of MCC at 120 frames at 1080p. And along with that comes a console FLV slider for the new generation of consoles as well, which I know has been a highly, highly requested feature to come into the MCC. I see you guys in the chat. I see you guys in the comments. You've been asking about that console FLV slider. And we actually do have some updates right now, guys. Sadly enough, console FOV slider will not be coming to the Xbox One family of consoles. It was within the Halo 4 flight at first and then they patched it out say, stating that there were actually a lot of complaints about the FOV slider not working so well on the Xbox One family of consoles. I guess the original Xbox One is probably struggling with that since I think Xbox One really struggles enough just to play Halo 4. The 343 did state that they are still planning to bring FOV slider to console on Xbox One family of consoles sometime later past November 17th. They haven't specified the exact date. My guess is the next flight that comes around will test it out again. They are planning to do a custom browser flight as well with a lot of other features that we didn't mention in this video. So make sure you subscribe to when that, catch that video when that goes live. I'm assuming with the content browser light that we'll have that they will come with like a console FOV slider and various other features that I've been looking to add in for a while. When that flight happens is anybody's guess. My guess probably would be either in mid to late January or early February because I wouldn't suspect much work to be done during December because most of the time uh, after Thanksgiving, many people use their time off at Microsoft to just take the entire month off because I think they get about five weeks of paid vacation and the majority of the workforce at Microsoft takes basically the entire month of December off because they are so crunched and trying to get everything else done throughout the year. That doesn't mean no work on the MCC will be done within that time. I'm just saying that I don't expect a flight to happen in December, especially with the most recent release of Halo 4 coming on the 17th. So what are you most excited about coming this November 17th, guys? Are you looking forward to the Xbox Series X improvements? Are you looking forward to just Halo 4 in general or all these new features coming to the MCC like crossplay? Let me know in the comment section down below as I do read all of them and try to reply to most of them as well. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to tap that subscribe button. Missed any content for me recently, or you've been on the loop for the last few days or so, check out the videos on the screen right here. I got a link to all my news and informational videos if you missed anything. So thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.